there's something about the mountains of Tennessee that draws people to them. The Cherokee called the Great Smoky Mountains the land of blue smoke. The constant presence of a haze that clings to the mountaintops can be spellbinding, making people want to return or never leave. Pigeon Forge is a place I have visited hundreds of times over the decades. It was always the family fun vacation spot. Had season passes to Silver Dollar City before it was Dollywood, and stopping at Archie Campbell's Hee Haw Village was a must-do every visit. Pigeon Forge was first settled in the late 1700s when the area was governed by North Carolina. By the 1820s, local businessman Isaac Love had established an iron forge on the west fork of the Little Pigeon River. A decade later, the Love family constructed a grist mill next to the forge. Fast forward nearly two centuries and the building still stands as the city's oldest structure and the only building listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The old mill is just one of many things to experience in this popular mountain resort town. Today we want to show you 10 things you must do when visiting Pigeon Forge. From the best stops for adrenaline junkies and where you can go for the beverage of choice in the Smokies, to places where you can shop and dine, and an entire island sure to keep you entertained. It's all here and we're going to run it down for you. All of that and so much more today from the Great Smoky Mountains. We begin where the Pigeon Forge we know today got its start. The old mill is the icon of the community and the one thing you have to make sure you see when you're in town. You've probably seen the historic landmark featured in publications all around the world. It's one of the most photographed mills in the nation. During the war between the states, the eastern part of Tennessee supported the Union. While the Smokies area didn't see any major battles, only small skirmishes, the old mill played an important role in the war effort. Secret knitting looms were set up on the second floor of the mill, which produced clothing for Union soldiers based nearby where Gatlinburg is today. There was also a makeshift hospital on the third floor. The old mill continues to grind wheat and corn for flour and corn mill using hydropower. Products produced on site are sold inside a general store on the mill's main floor. There are also lots of local souvenirs available for purchase. Next door is a newer building that's home to the Old Mill Restaurant, consistently ranked as one of the top places to eat in the area. A collection of buildings and strut plazas adjacent to the old mill house a number of unique shopping opportunities. Not to be missed, Pigeon River Pottery. In the 1940s, a man by the name of Douglas Ferguson found the area to be rich with red clay, what he used to make his pottery creations. He purchased an old tobacco barn on the mill's property and transformed it into a pottery studio. The acclaimed artist died in 1999 but his legacy continues in the workspace he created, where visitors can watch pottery being made by talented artisans. These pieces are some of the best souvenirs I've collected from the Smokies over the years. Next door was Ferguson's House, which has been turned into the Old Mill Pottery House Cafe and Grill, another favorite eatery. Pottery created next door is used here in the cafe. Across the street is a place that preserves and passes on the traditions of blacksmithing to a new generation. Operated by the History Channel's Forged in Fire fan favorite Robbie Bowman, Iron Mountain Metalcraft lets you get really close to the action. In fact, you can be a part of the action. 
Visitors can actually don an apron and goggles, step up to the anvil, and swing the hammer themselves for an unforgettable experience. Best of all, the finished product can be taken home in the form of a knife or horseshoe. Kids as young as five can participate in the blacksmithing lessons, which fill up quickly. Visit the shop's website to learn how you can make an appointment. There's so much to see and do here in the square, you could easily spend an entire day. But I want to recommend one more stop before I move on. Located on Old Mill Street is something you don't see a lot here in the Smokies. It's a place that in no way, shape, or form resembles the normal touristy souvenir shop. Step into a long story short and into a carefully curated boutique of the whimsical. Open since 2017, the shop offers vintage and used books, antiques, rustic and garden decor, and local art, with a little pop culture and quite a bit of steampunk thrown in. The perfect spot for book lovers, every visit here is different. When one piece sells, they replace it with a new creation, gadget, or treasure. Be prepared to spend some time taking it all in. Hands down, long story short, the best shop for me in Pigeon Forge. The most popular entertainment and retail complex in Pigeon Forge is the island. Sitting on 23 acres and boasting more than 80 shops, restaurants, attractions, and two Margaritaville lodging options on site, this is one of those places with more of a resort vibe where you never really have to leave. Standing tall at 200 feet is the centerpiece, the Great Smoky Mountain Wheel that provides riders spectacular views of the area and comfy all-glass gondolas that seat up to eight people. The top free thing to do in Pigeon Forge is to see the waters dance at the Island Fountain. Hundreds gather at this cool community spot most evenings, especially around the holidays, to watch the fountain shoot water 60 feet into the air, choreographed to music and lights. There are a number of carnival-type rides to keep the younger crowd entertained along with a ropes course, while we highly recommend experiencing one of the island's newest attractions. Housed in a state-of-the-art building with a steampunk theme, Skyfly Soar America is similar to a ride you might be familiar with at Disney's Epcot in Florida. But here, the journey is six minutes long and simulates flying over some of the most beautiful places in America. The film, coupled with some pretty incredible special effects, make this a must-do ride the entire family can enjoy. We always stay at the Margaritaville Island Hotel when visiting Pigeon Forge. Somehow this property has struck the perfect balance in design between Parrot Head and Mountain Chic. The location, amenities, hospitality of the staff, and their attention to detail make this an enjoyable stay each and every time. We'll have more on the island in a later video here on this channel. If you don't have time to spend a whole day at Dollywood, but still have a need for speed, check out one of the area's many alpine coasters. It seems they're popping up all over the Smokies nowadays, especially in Pigeon Forge and nearby Wares Valley. Each one has some unique feature they like to tout. The longest track, the fastest, most drops. We've been on a few and couldn't possibly single out a favorite. A list with links to the area's mountain coasters is available now on our website to help you in your research. One of the newest entertainment and retail complexes in Pigeon Forge is the Mountain Mile and Tower Shops on Teaster Lane. Covering more than 170 acres on the site formerly occupied by Belts Outlet Mall, a series of shops and eateries are built around large open green spaces that promote a sense of community through fun and relaxation. 
Outdoor shop REI has a storefront, and Junction 35 features a distillery, full-service restaurant, and custom craft cocktails set within an atmosphere that recalls the days of the steam locomotive. Adrenaline junkies can get their fix at the Mountain Monster, a 200-foot tower that contains three exciting thrill rides, an aerial drop ride, a freefall experience, and a launch where riders are slung 140 feet up in the air. Also at the Mountain Mile, you can take in the beauty of the Great Smoky Mountains in style by renting a Polaris Slingshot, one of the guaranteed ways to draw attention to yourself while cruising the parkway. Pigeon Forge loves to put on a good dinner show. Dolly Parton's Stampede is the most popular one I've experienced a few times. A favorite thing of ours to do here, even if we're not seeing a show, is to take a stroll down the horse walk, an opportunity to get an up-close look at the real stars of the show. If you don't care about dinner and just want to be entertained by the local talent, there are options like Paula Deen's Lumberjack Feud and The Comedy Barn. Direct links to all of these shows are on our website. While Dollywood is the most dominant attraction in this area, there are dozens of other family-friendly spots that will draw you in and give you a thrill and maybe a chill or two. If you've ever wanted to take a deep dive into the tragic story of the Titanic or try to understand America's obsession with crime, there are larger-than-life attractions on the parkway just for you. You can get an up-close look at some of Hollywood's biggest stars at a wax museum, experience a science-focused indoor amusement park, take a spin in a go-kart, or brush up on your golfing skills at one of the many putt-putt courses. Just across the river in neighboring Sevierville is one of the area's most beloved places to visit. The iconic structure known today as the Apple Barn was constructed more than a century ago on a 65-acre farm, and at that time the barn was a place to keep cattle. Today the barn functions as a general store and cider bar, where all types of food and drink products made from apples grown on the property can be purchased. We're especially fond of the apple salsa, which we take home almost every time, and love to sit down and snack on an apple glazed donut with a scoop of vanilla ice cream from the cider bar. The barn is the centerpiece of a complex that includes two sit-down restaurants, one inside the original farmhouse, both famous for their homemade apple fritters. The property also includes a candy shop where you can watch taffy being made, a creamery, a Christmas shop, and a winery. A recent addition is the Apple Barn Cider House, where visitors can sample a variety of hard ciders crafted on site. Here they use a sterile filtration method, taking special care to retain as much of the fresh apple cider taste as possible. The finished product is smooth, clean, and crisp unlike any other hard apple cider you've tried other places. That's it, 10 things you must do when visiting Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. What are your favorites on the list? Share some memories with us in the video's comment section. We always love hearing from you. This is one in a series of videos featuring tips and guides from the Smokies, including a previous video just on Gatlinburg. A complete guide to everything mentioned in this video can be found at our website. We have a link in the description. Stay updated with our latest content by subscribing to the channel. It's free and activate the notification bell so you know when new tips and guides are released. As always, thank you for watching. From the Great Smoky Mountains, see you next time.